evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2023 Editors Forum of Namibia Journalism Awards. I will be your director of ceremonies, Ashwin Berry. But before we embark upon this evening of celebrating and extolling the dedication of our esteemed journalists, allow me to convey salutation to our distinguished guests. His Excellency, Dr. Hage G. Gengob, the President of the Republic of Namibia. <clears throat> Madam Monica Gengos, First Lady of the Republic of Namibia. And then I'm going to go through a list, which we will clap afterwards. <laughs> Mr. Frank Stephan, EFN Chairperson, Retired Major General James Shivikwa, who is the Chairperson of the Media Complaints Committee. Mr. Jacques Poe, our keynote speaker. FNB Namibia, who is our platinum sponsor, sponsor rather. Our silver sponsor, Old Harvard and List. Bronze sponsor, Old Mutual. All category sponsors, i.e. Agra Feedmaster, One Pencil Project, Holland Namibia, and Cercel Ness Namibia. Members of the EFN Board, Mr. David Bishop, Deputy Chairperson, Ms. Salma Ikela, Secretary General, Mr. Toivo Njebela, Member, Ms. Ronau Radamaya, Ex Officio, Mr. Peter Denk, Ex Officio, Ms. Elizabeth Mueller, Coordinator. The team of adjudicators, Ms. Emily Brown, Mr. Enno Akpabio and Dr. Hugh Ellis, all journalists present and especially those who entered their work. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to the 2023 Editors Forum Journalism Awards. <clears throat> Wonderful. I see there's already some synergy between you and I and that's exactly how I like it. I'd like to compliment you all. I am surprised. This is the first time I've been in a room with journalists and I haven't seen a single waistcoat. So progress in the fashion area, <laughs> but you all look absolutely beautiful, absolutely stunning. Um, and just a word to the gentlemen, um, as an MC, I prefer to be the best looking here. So I am disappointed that you all have decided to look better than me. Fair and fine, we move on with the program. To give the official welcoming remarks, please welcome EFN Chairperson, Mr. Frank Stefan. Good evening and thank you, Master of Ceremonies. Obviously, first and foremost, allow me to once again welcome the President of the Republic of Namibia, His Excellency Dr. Hage Geingop, and his wife, First Lady. Monica Geingos. Obviously, this is a big event, prize giving, so it is a, an extreme pleasure to welcome you here tonight. Um, also, allow me to welcome an, uh, the, our esteemed guests of honor, especially Jacques Poe. Um, I don't, there you are. Our guest speaker, as well as the representatives of those companies who've once again sponsored the EFN financially allowing us to, to actually organize this event. So colleagues, friends, and benefactors of the EFN and the Namibian media industry, I greet you all and certainly address a special word of welcome to Ronel Rademeyer and Jolene Nell who have organized this event. Just as surely, I wish to welcome Elizabeth Muller, who so ably takes care of all EFN matters. And last but not least, I welcome my fellow EFN board members. I would have also loved to welcome our uh, Minister of Information and Communication Technology, that is Dr. Pia Mushilenga, the Honorable Minister of the MICT. I suppose you can call the MICT our line ministry in a way. Um, he asked to be excused this evening, but he sends his regards. I would like to apologize for later on being unable to totally stick to our plan uh, to host a lengthy online guest appearance by the world-renowned renowned, uh, futurist, uh, Professor Yuval Harari. While he did try to at least partially honor his commitment, I'm, I'm sure we can all appreciate that the man is otherwise occupied on account of the sad conflict that we see in that area of the, or that part of the world. 
So what you will see happening in a moment or two is um, we'll be able to honor the, His Excellency, the Namibian President, by handing him a uniquely Namibian publication, which we feel is likely to be very close to his heart. Um, I want to at least tell you what the dedication is that I wrote into this book. I must be honest, because if I wrote it, you would not be able to read it, uh, Mr. President. So I actually asked Elizabeth to write it, and I just signed it. But it basically says, uh, the President of the Re Republic of Namibia, Your Excellency, Dr. Hage Gottfried Geingob. It is the Editor's Forum of Namibia's absolute delight to hand over the publication which surely is a reflection of Namibia's contribution towards the aims and tenets of what is understood to be freedom of the press. Namibia's contribution towards free expression combined with responsible reporting has always been underscored by your support, starting way back in 1990, when the Vintuk Declaration was determined and supported by the United Nations, and continued to the Vintuk Plus 30 Declaration that was drafted again in Vintuk and first adopted at UNESCO's World Press Freedom Day Global Conference in Namibia on 3rd May 2021. We all want to inform the nation first and foremost, and if you ever doubted that important role, reflect on the time when the COVID-19 pandemic shut us down. We all want to be honest, independent and impartial, and we all want to bring a story that is relevant, factual, and balanced. A story that has impact and serves our communities. That makes us all winners rather sooner than later. But there will always be an X factor. Sometimes it's pure luck that turns one story into a winner story that we all hunt after. Let us respect the hard work of our colleagues and accept their good fortune if they win here tonight. There can only be one winner at the end of the day. As much as we would all want to win the coveted prizes, we all need to understand that the prizes handed out here tonight are the result of some extensive and independent assessing by a panel that is unbiased. On another level, I would like to tell you that I totally subscribe to the independent reporting process that works here in Namibia. And I absolutely believe that the process of self-regulation is the only way in which we, as fellow Namibians and media industry, can contribute towards a call to transparency, responsibility, and accountability, which helps us, again, build our nation. It is therefore imperative that we, as an industry, which has jointly compiled and agreed to the Code of Ethics and Conduct, have to be able to resolve our issues outside court. It seems sad that this country seems to only seek solutions in courthouses that are totally overwhelmed, simply because we seem to appreciate justice only when it is spoken by a judge. It is therefore my absolute and sincere wish that the legal dispute between NBC and EFN can be resolved ASAP. It is not my wish to start an argument here, so I will not expand. Suffice to say that families should never quarrel in a court. In closing, allow me to again thank everybody and make you welcome once more. Um, and I thank those who made this evening possible, and more importantly, I wish all journalists well. You have all worked so hard during these past years. May the best lady or man win. Thank you. And it is now my absolute pleasure to welcome our President of Namibia, His Excellency Dr. Hage Geingob. He wants to speak a few words. Director of the Proceedings, Journalist, First Lady, all of you, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor for me to be here to share this evening with you. I was really tired. I have been in Cape Town doing things there, and I was finished. And this morning, I was from 9 o'clock receiving diplomats. 
13 of them presenting their credentials. All that time I had to stand. Now even you, some of you are young, to stand the whole day and to come here again to stand is not possible for some of you even. How about me? So therefore, you will appreciate that I'm not going to talk or deliver a long speech. It's there. I was listening to him. He copied from me. <laughs> so what he has said here, I would have said and read in my speech too. Only thing I could say is that we must be proud as Namibians that we are referred to having the freest press in Africa. It's an envy of many people to, for many years to be referred to as having the freest press in Africa. <laughs> and when we were sometime talking with him and others, I was saying that, and is Gwen here? Is Gwen here? Oh, you, don't, you didn't invite her? <laughs> That's a lady who has a trailblazer. So anyway, <coughs> when I was once invited by her, this kind of occasions, I said, as long as I'm a president of this country, there will be no journalists being arrested, press will be free. And that's what we are talking about, and thank you very much. I believe in that. Free as press is the envy of many countries and people, and other people are recognizing that. And therefore, I will never, I have only a few months to go, and I will, not, I will not contradict what I said then, that as long as I am the president, there will be no journalists who will be arrested, molested. Arguments don't understand that as being threatened. The disagreements. But the journalists will be arrested, beaten up by police. If police do, they might go to court. So that's what Namibia is, and we must be proud of that, that we have this free press. Journalists can write as they want. I hope they can elevate, improve on quality, like we politicians might do too. But that's what Namibia is. And therefore, to me, when I go to Africa, to the world, and talk about Namibia, I'm talking about people who are reconciled, who came from different backgrounds, which was ugly. But today, many friends I bring in here are saying, you were telling us there was apartheid in that country. Blacks were oppressed, and so on. Yes. But you know, you don't make peace with your friends. You make peace with your, your enemies. So if we have enemies in the past, we made peace, because you make peace with your enemies. Not that I regard among us white and black as enemies, but I'm just making the point that we are making a good progress in holding hands, because we are saying let's hold hands. The Harambe that I copied from Swahili language, and why did I do that? If I used uh, Tamara, some could have felt left out. Africans, they could understand, but some could have still left out. English, many would have been left out. So I said, let's use the language that would be neutral, so that I am saying Harambe, meaning pulling in the same direction. And Namibians are doing that. We are overcritical of ourselves. We politicians do that too. But if you look at countries that I've traveled to and see the relationship of people, it's not that easy. And also conditions of people. So when I come back home, I say, thanks God. And we must maintain that peace. Without maintaining peace, without holding hands and saying we are one people, one nation, one. You know, Hage Lolo, I'm called all kinds of names. <laughs> And I just enjoy, I laugh, all kinds of things. So this is, this, this is Namibia. I would just enjoy, now I went to the bar the other day. I was accused of going to the bar, people are, I went where people are. 
just to mingle, and I've been doing that. Weekends, we just go. They, don't, they didn't have their selfies that time. They couldn't even put it. This time, they were filming and just putting it. People said, the first time I'm going there. Now, when I see a group of people sitting there, even if they're drinking, if you are a leader, and if your people are drinking, go to them. You want to get them, huh? Go to the bar and talk to them. What are you doing here? Eh? Do you think this is the best way to do and uh, live your life? Then some will say, yeah, give me something to drink. <laughs> now, <laughs> what do you do now? Here is the person, nice to you, but then I didn't do it. My wife is the one. I told her to help these people. <laughs> so president didn't give the people alcohol. We didn't do that, actually. But she was coke and something. But they were happy just to meet their president sitting down with them there and so on. We always do that. So Namibia is a country, and some, somebody said, President Namibia is moving around without security because there's nobody in that country. It's an empty country. <laughs> then some said, I didn't like it. Our president, if he goes out, will get him. Now I'm putting people in trouble. So from now on, I'm not going to go out because my term is ending too. And that way I will be careful not to put others in trouble. But as for freedom of movement for you, freedom of speech, freedom of press, that is guaranteed. And I think it will be guaranteed after I go do. So with that, I didn't want to take too much time. I didn't want to talk too much, I said, but I talked enough. Thank you very much. Okay, just quickly for those of you who are interested, uh, tracing the footprints of the Vintuk Declaration and charting the Vintuk Plus 30 Declaration and seeing that you contributed such a lot to it, it is my pleasure. What matters to one often has consequences for many. What matters to communities has potential to make or break nations. What matters to a company affects people. And what matters to those who have has impact on those who don't. Over the last 10 years, the First Rand Namibia Foundation has carefully invested over 85 million Namibian dollars into doing what matters throughout Namibia. Working on behalf of FNB Namibia, RMB, West Bank, Ashburton, and Point Break, the Foundation's continuous investment countrywide has meaningfully impacted the lives of over one million Namibians, driving systemic change in education, delivering skills development, providing environmental protection, supporting health promotion, and encouraging sports and arts and culture is more than charity. It's a reason to get up. It's what makes us human and reminds us that companies need people who believe in the same things. Every day, the people of FNB, RMB, Ashburton, West Bank, and Point Break work to make a positive difference daily in what we do, in how we do it, and in sharing what we deliver with our communities. The very act of doing what matters inspires us to be more than a bank, more than an investment house, more than advisors, delivering more than we believe to be possible daily. From the neediest rural school support to countrywide educational materials investment, to inspiration for budding school journalists and to national panel debates on Namibia's future, to government disaster relief support in times of national crisis, to celebrating talent and protecting local heritage, to delivering affordable housing solutions and introducing renewable energy solutions and green bonds. What matters to us is doing the right thing. It is time for us to commence the EFN Journalism Awards 2023.
celebrating journalism excellence. Now, our first category is Politics and Public Governance Award sponsored by AGRA. I'd like to call Ms. Trudy Howard to the stage to do the handover. Now, this is an award for an exceptional news story, feature, or documentary that demonstrates analytical excellence and a clear knowledge of political issues and developments. Please note all the nominees are in alphabetical order. The nominees are Shinovene Emmanuel, the Namibian, Sonia Smith, the Namibian, and Yana Smith, Cosmos 94.1. A round of applause for our nominees. We have two journalists sharing first place. The winners are Shinovene Emmanuel, the Namibian, on Esau's betrayal and Yana Smith Cosmos 94.1, the pitfalls of the paradox of plenty. from the Namibian. All right. Okay. I was ready to tell Shinovene he doesn't have as many friends as he thinks he does. Wonderful. <laughs> Agriculture, Environment, Forestry, and Fisheries Award is next, and it is sponsored aptly by Feedmaster. If you could ask Miss Colleen Kun to the stage to do the handover. Now, this is an award for an exceptional new story, feature, or documentary focusing on an agricultural, environmental, forestry, or fisheries issue of great public interest. The nominees are July Nafuka, NBC. <laughs> Katarina Mosa, Algamana Titan. And freelance journalists who co authored their entry Timo Shihepo and Sam Sole. Huh. We have two winners again. I have to say, this, this is a testament to the writing quality. July Nafuka, the Namibian, anti-poaching officers in the Babwata and Madumo National Parks call for better living conditions. And the co-authors, Timo Shihepo and Sam Sole, who are freelance journalists, Canadian company exploring for oil in Namibia in battle for credibility. category is Education, Health, and Social Development Award sponsored by One Pencil Project. If you could please ask the incredible Ms. Ronal Randemeyer to the stage to do the handover on behalf of Professor Helen Davis of Harvard University and its One Pencil Project. Now this award is for an exceptional news story, feature, or documentary 
that demonstrates an in-depth understanding of issues in the fields of education, health, and social development. The nominees are Herta Ekanjo, Eagle FM. Mercy Karwombe, The Namibian. Sonia Smith, The Namibian. And Tuyemo Haidula, Namibian son. All right, we have one winner for this one. Our first solo winner of the evening is Mercy Karwombe of the Namibian. Married at the age of two, Kaoko Land's child bride was the article. is the Mining and Energy Award sponsored by Old Mutual. If you could please ask Miss Mignon Dupria to stage to do the handover. Now this category honors excellence in the coverage of an exceptional news story, feature or documentary that demonstrates analysis of developments in the field of mining or energy and their effect on the Namibian economy. The nominees are Shamane Gashihewe and James Jamu, the Namibian. <laughs> Justicia Shipena, Eagle FM. And Kenya Kamboe, Namibian son. And the winner is. Charmaine Ngashiewe and James Jamu, the Namibian. Kavango oil drilling leaves painful trail. Business Finance and Economic Development Award sponsored by FNB. Could you please ask Hileni Amadila to the stage to hand over the certificate? Now, this category is for an exceptional news story, feature, or documentary that analyzes and explains developments and decisions in the fields of business, finance, and economic developments and the impact of these developments or decisions on the audience. The nominees in alphabetical order are Elago Ndapewa Shitatala NBC. Lazarus Amukeshe, the Namibian. And Sonia Smith, the Namibian. And the winner is... Lazarus Amukeshe, the Namibian. For GIPF's tentacles where government workers' billions are invested. Sports Award
is interesting because there's a lot of sport lovers in here but I'd like to argue that maybe none of us love sport quite as much as His Excellency the President of Namibia and um, I'm not saying that if you wrote about Liverpool you have a slight advantage I will not say that <laughs> but I shall continue with the program the sports award is sponsored by Holland Namibia if Mr. Sam Kawapurira could come onto the stage for the handover now this award is for an exceptional news story feature or documentary that holds those involved in the administration of sport accountable. The nominees in alphabetical order. Limbam Petami, Namibian Sun. Co-presenters Morris Kalanduka and Maggie Fosledo Paz, 99 FM. And Tillman Van Lil, Republican. And the winner is someone I saw earlier, and he remembered the event was today. I've commentated with him. He's a fantastic guy. Tillman Van Lil Republican, future path of teenage stars in Jeopardy. journalism fraternity but in golf if you get a hole in one usually you buy the clubhouse drinks now there is a cash bar I'm not saying who's supposed to be buying the drinks but there are signs as to who you could look at and it is our winners tonight which I look forward to knowing personally of course we now move over to our penultimate award as you can see the certificates have run out. Please another round of applause for Miss Elizabeth Mueller for truly, truly making this an easier process for me. So, the second last award. We're still together? All right, lovely. Best Visual Storytelling Award sponsored by Cecil Nurse Namibia. If Mr. Bertie Cotter of MD, MD rather, of Cecil Nurse Namibia could please join me on stage. Now this award recognizing, recognizes the outstanding photograph, infographic, videographic, or digital image that presents information to enhance the narrative of a story. The nominees are in alphabetical order. James Jamu, the Namibian. <laughs> Joyce Kondo, freelance journalist and Strauss Lunyangwe, New Era. And the winner is Joyce Kondo for Fishrod Fashionista. Kondo is a freelance journalist. Good afternoon, Professor Yuval. My name is Sonia Smith. 
I am a Namibian journalist and I'm speaking to you from Vinduk, Namibia. Hello, it's good to be with you, Sonia. I'm glad to be here. Professor Yuval, thank you for gracing this event uh, with your presence. Uh, but tonight, uh, we want to speak about some important themes and questions um, uh, that are linked to the future of humanity and as well as uh, journalism. Yes. Um, you have said that um, artificial intelligence is an alien threat that could wipe humanity. Mm. Can you just perhaps um, explain your views on this? Yes, um, human beings, wherever they live, whether in Namibia or in Israel, in America or Australia, we are biologically the same. We have the same bodies, we have the same minds, we think and feel in the same ways. But artificial intelligence processes information and makes decisions in a completely different and alien way than us. The two most important things that everybody should know about AI is that AI is the first technology in history that can make decisions by itself. And it is the first technology in history that can create new ideas by itself. Every previous technology, even an atom bomb, cannot make decisions. So even nuclear weapons, in a way, they empower human beings because we decide how to use them. But AI is different. It is making decisions itself. So it can take power away from us. And secondly, every previous technology, like radio or print, could only copy and spread our ideas. It couldn't create new ideas. A printing press could you know, print newspapers, but couldn't write the articles, couldn't write the books. AI can write articles and books and create completely new ideas that no human being had ever thought about. This is not necessarily bad, of course, it has a lot of positive potential, but there is also a huge danger that we are creating something more powerful than us, that we will lose control over it, and this could endanger the very survival of humankind. You speak of uh, losing control. Um, if these are threats to humanity, how as humans can we mitigate these kind of threats? Um, ideally, we should recognize that this is a threat <laughs> to all humans, and therefore we should unite uh, uh, to regulate artificial intelligence on, on many levels. You know, I, I don't want to go into all the details, this is a big subject, but we can start with simple regulations. For instance, that AI should not be allowed to fake humans, to counterfeit humans. Um, that if you go online, for instance, and you interact with someone, you must know whether you're interacting with a human being or with an AI. Today, when you go online and you talk with someone, already, you might not know. You, you think it's a human being, but actually it's an AI. And this is a threat, uh, not only, you know, for fraud and, and financial manipulations, but also, also for large-scale political manipulations. You know, previously we saw campaigns of fake news, conspiracy theories, things like that, with technology being used simply to disseminate the fake news created by humans. But now the AI can actually pretend to be human. And we need very strict laws against uh, that. We also need to make sure that the power, the immense power of AI is not monopolized by a few countries which then use it to dominate and exploit the rest of the world. We all know that in the 19th century, during the Industrial Revolution, a few countries like Britain and Germany and the United States and Japan, they led the Industrial Revolution. They industrialized first, and this gave them the power to conquer and exploit almost the whole world. This can happen again with AI. Maybe not the same countries, maybe different countries this time, four or five countries leading the AI revolution, 
gaining immense economic and military and political power because of this technology, and then using it to, again, uh, build digital empires and uh, uh, dominate and exploit the entire planet. So this is a, a huge threat coming not from the AI itself, but from the humans using it, and we need to stop it now before it is too late. You know, the way today AI is created, it's not that humans create the, 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 the entire capabilities of AI. AI, in a way, it's like a baby. The humans create a baby AI, and then it needs to learn and develop, and it learns by itself. This is the meaning of AI. That's the difference between AI and previous computers. AI learns by itself, by interacting with the world, by interacting with information from the world. Now, if the information on which the AI is trained is full of racism, the AI is also likely to become racist, just like a human child who is brought up on books and, and images and stories full of racism, that child is likely to be racist. It's the same with AI. So we need to be mindful that this is possible. And then again, there is a long list of regulations that I, I, I don't want to go into right now, but it should be clear that the, the danger is there, but there are also solutions. And the key is to act on a, on a global level if we allow just a few countries to monopolize this immense power, then even inadvertently, these few countries are likely to create an, an AI with a distorted view of the world. Um, AI can analyze vast amounts of data to uncover hidden patterns. How, yes. might, the, how might AI actually be number one, uh, be used to support investigative journalism. Number two, to provide insights. And I'm so three, sorry. I, I really apologize. We have to conclude this session because we have to go to the next interview. So I really apologize. We actually agree just on uh, two questions in about 10 minutes. So maybe there was some no. misunderstanding. With, maybe uh, I just answer Elizabeth, this question. Then, yes. yes. We have to end soon. Thank you. Thank you. So, let, let him answer that question, please, in the peace one. Do, do, in do, you, the want peace to, one. do you want yes, me to answer please. this question or, or another yeah. question? Because we only have time for one. Okay, answer the, uh, the other question on peace. What is the question on peace, please? Uh, Sonia, ask the question, please. Um, uh, okay. Um, um, Professor Yuval, since you are speaking to us um, uh, from Jer Jerusalem, and given your extensive knowledge of history and geopolitics, what do you believe are the key obstacles that need to be overcome for lasting peace to be achieved in the ongoing conflict that is obviously in your region? Um, do you see any potential pathways to address these obstacles effectively, maybe, in your well, view? There is much to say about that, but I, I will try to be brief and say that the key to peace is to look to the future and not to the past. The curse of history is that people try to save the past, to correct past injuries, and this is impossible. We cannot go back to the past and undo the injuries of the past. We should focus on prevent new injuries. People sometimes use past injuries to justify new injuries. This is the wrong path to peace. The path to peace is to heal the injuries of the past. And here, this is something that journalists uh, have a very important role to play, that the foundation of every society, and especially of peaceful societies, is that we know the truth about the world. That, and journalists, I think, today are on the front line of every conflict, of every war, and they have to resist, you know, this attack of fake news and conspiracy theories and lies. And um, hopefully, if the journalists do their part in protecting truth and other members of societies do their own jobs, then someday we will have peace. 
Professor Yuval, thank you so much for this um, insightful uh, conversation. Um, and I'm also confident that um, this conversation or insightful um, 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 task and, and, and information that we've spoken to can actually be used um, um, going forward and um, right now and going forward, of course. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, thank you guys. Just think, think of it, millions upon millions of young South Africans are not just with our jobs, but will never have one. How do we find them hope? How do we find them a future? How do we prevent them from, be, from turning to crime? Just on, uh, on the Cape Flats outside of Cape Town, and the president mentioned he was there this morning, there are, are an estimated 125,000 young people that are armed and members of the Cape Gangs, the so-called Cape's gangsters. They outgun the police, they kill with abundance, and they kill without blinking an eye. South Africa is unfortunately a country that has been flooded with guns. And it has been like that now for more than three decades. You know, we come from a very long, violent history, like Namibia. It's not that, not that much difference. You had apartheid and we had apartheid. Apartheid was enforced on you by the National Party government in Pretoria. But somehow, you never became as violent as we did. And maybe it has to do with the events that happened before Namibia became independent in March 1990. A few months before independence, tons upon tons of weapons that the South Africans used in the Bush War were shipped to South Africa. Trucks, one after the other went south to take the weapons away, they wouldn't leave it for the, for the communist swap, who of course not. These weapons, remember that Namibia became independent in, in, March, in March 1990. By then, the ANC had been unbanned and Nelson Mandela has been released, and they were the first signs of the negotiations between the National Party and the ANC. Good evening. Director of Ceremonies, Ashwin Berry. His Excellency, Dr. Hage Genkop, President of the Republic of Namibia. First Lady, Monica Gankos, Madam Monica Gankos. Mr. Frank Stephen, EFN Chairperson. All journalists, especially those who enter their excellent work. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Thank you for this opportunity to address you this evening. As introduced, my name is Rusa Nandago, and I'm an economist at FNB Namibia, and I greet you on behalf of FNB Namibia. Tonight, we celebrate excellent journalism in Namibia, and it's important that we do this in order to set higher standards, inspire a new cadre of investigative and insightful journalists, and ensure that stories are told about our country. Namibia is at the cusp of a new age of growth. With our ability to manage international engagement, climate change, regulatory and legislatory enhancements, evolving ethics, standards, and governance developments, all striving to stay in step with society's own self-innovation. As a banking group, where Namibia goes, you will find us. For over 117 years, we have been a preferred partner to most Namibians, enabling their dreams financing their business innovations, and helping to establish a deep local knowledge about Namibia's potential. It is no wonder that our vision is to help build a globally competitive Namibia, and we do this daily by unlocking opportunities for all as we go. Excellent journalism conducts investigations, uncovers hidden truths, and brings to light the stories that matter. It challenges the status quo, exposes corruption and wrongdoing, 
and amplifies the voices of marginalized communities. An entertainer, yes. A town crier, yes. The font of knowledge, maybe. And a watchdog ensuring transparency and accountability in society. How can we help you, you ask? Here's what we believe excellent journalism can contribute to building a globally competitive Namibia. Firstly, excellent journalism helps us bring about an informed citizenry. With accurate and comprehensive news coverage, you can empower citizens with the knowledge necessary to engage actively in civic life. Informed citizens make informed choices, be it political, economic, or social. They are more likely to participate in democratic processes, hold their leaders accountable, and contribute to the development of their communities. An active and engaged citizenry forms part of a bedrock of a globally competitive nation. Secondly, excellent journalism promotes transparency and accountability. By investigating and reporting on issues of public interest, journalism exposes poor governance, corruptions, and inefficiencies within institutions that claim to serve Namibia and Namibians. Transparent institutions and accountable governance attract investment, foster economic growth, and enhance Namibia's competitiveness on a global stage. Thirdly, great reporting and thought leadership drives innovation and economic development. Through its coverage of scientific advancements, advancements, for example, in agriculture, water management, energy resourcing, technological breakthroughs, and entrepreneurial success stories, usually of our clients, your profession inspires creativity and entrepreneurial spirit. It highlights the potential of Namibian industries, promotes local talent, and attracts investments and partnerships. By showcasing Namibia's achievements, opportunities, and unique cultural, journal, uh, unique cultural heritage, as a journalist, you also contribute to the country's branding and image building efforts, positioning it as an attractive destination for global investors, tourists, and trade partners. Furthermore, you and your media houses can unlock opportunities for dialogue and inclusivity by amplifying diverse voices, giving space to marginalized communities, and facilitating constructive debates. The institutions to which you affiliate as journalists have their own responsibility to nurture a culture of inclusivity and tolerance. Bridging social divides and fostering understanding, you and your media house can do so much to promote Namibia's diverse population. In a globally competitive world, a harmonious and inclusive society is a valuable asset, attracting international collaborations, fostering in innovation, and significantly does play a role in attracting investors to Namibia. Each story you have has the potential to stimulate, motivate, and inspire Namibia and Namibians to greatness. At FNB, we make promises daily that need to be kept, and we still believe after 117 years that, you, that your word was indeed your honor. Let the words you own and share be inspirational, useful, and meaningful in the pursuit of building a globally competitive Namibia. And we will be there right by your side, as we are tonight, feeding you stories to support Namibia's potential. Our congratulations to all the winners tonight for the award ceremony a bit later. May your greatness inspire you to pay it forward to giving it back to the newcomers in the field. Let's grow together. Thank you. and ethically sound journalism pieces over the adjudication period. Individuals cannot submit entries for this category. The Journalist of the Year is selected by the independent panel of adjudicators. We will ask you, whoever the winner is, to give a one minute speech upon receiving the award. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a golden envelope, so it's different. Are we ready? Ladies and gentlemen, at the 2023 EFN Journalists Awards, 
the journalist of the year 2023 is Lazarus Amukeshe of the Namibian. Ooh, unbelievable. Um, I don't even want to say um, I haven't prepared any speech because I, I didn't think I was going to win this one. But thank you, thank you so much to... Oof, ah, goodness. I'm so overjoyed. Um, I don't even know what to say. But truly, truly, um, a very, very... I'm super grateful, I think, to um, the Namibian, firstly. Um, I'm not per se a journalist. I don't have a journalism degree. My background is finance um, and taxation and economics and all of that stuff. So I'm super, super grateful for Tangeni and Shinovene for taking a chance on me. That was around five years ago um, when I started writing, joined first the investigative team, and then went on to lead the business, the business and economic desk. So that's really, <laughs> oh goodness. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, and I think probably for um, a person that hasn't, um, well, ideally, in, in my case, I'd, I'd obviously have gone and decided to go back into, into corporate because before I joined the Namibian, I used to work at PwC and then went on to start writing. Um, but I think this is, it's probably a gap that I saw that most of the financial reporting, there was a little bit of a lag there, or there was a little bit of um, um, what you call improvement that was needed there. And I thank um, Tangeni and Chino and the entire the Namibian team and the entire support system across um, the ICIJ. Oof, I've gotten quite a lot of opportunities to write on finance, and I'm super, super thankful for your investment into, into, especially into business journalism. Um, and I think it's, 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 it's also important that we again call, I think, professionals that are not really uh, media people to join, to join the industry and know, give that whole um, a view, at least from where they, 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 they see um, um, whatever industry they're playing in. So I'm super, super grateful. And this is my first time taking a picture close to the president. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one as well. Super, super thankful. And wow, thank you. And with that, you can breathe a sigh of relief and relax. Of course, the president was absolutely a wonderful guest. The reason I'm saying that is you could either sit down or you can make your way to the cash bar. My name is Ashwin Bailey. Thank you.